Hello everyone. In today's video I explain why Telegram in my opinion sucks and why you shouldn't use it. Now Telegram has gotten a lot of hype, a lot of attention after well 2020 when uh, WhatsApp informed their users that they were doing something they were doing for uh, I don't know a couple of years already, namely sharing data with their mother uh, Facebook or Meta. So a lot of people installed other messengers such as Signal, Telegram or Threema uh, which are seemingly more privacy preserving. Now I've made a couple of videos on Signal already. Be sure to watch those if you want to know how Signal works and why Signal is indeed a very secure and privacy friendly messenger. And I will also uh, in the future make videos on Threema. But uh, in this video I'll focus on Telegram and why in my opinion it is not uh, very secure. Now there are basically two reasons for that and the first one is that they use uh, a homebrew and own encryption scheme which they call MTProto. Now I will not go into detail what MTProto does but um, suffice it to say it just breaks a couple of principles and the first one is Kirchhoff's principle which is a widely established principle regarding cryptography. The original is in French but uh, the literal translation is that what Kirchhoff said uh, is the design of a system should not require secrecy and compromise of the system should not inconvenience the correspondence. Now in today's terms uh, what this might or what he might say uh, nowadays is that the algorithm, the encryption algorithm must be open source and the security of the encryption algorithm must only rely on keeping the key, key secure and not the algorithm. What well, that means that every established encryption algorithm, and you maybe have seen me doing videos on those, and the, the reason I can make videos on those is because we know exactly what they're doing. We know what mathematical operations they use. There is no secrecy in those algorithms. So when you have an open source uh, algorithm, an encryption algorithm, there are hundreds of people, of crypto analysts, trying to break it or trying to find bugs in it. And this is why we now end up or we are now basically fortunate enough to have a couple of very secure encryption algorithms, right? We have RSA for asymmetric key encryption. We have AES, the Advanced Encryption Standard. And this is also why we no longer use DES, the Data Encryption Standard, because through thorough crypto analysis of this open source encryption algorithm, uh, we now find, okay, well, the key length is not enough, so we don't use it anymore. That's why we have triple S or, or just AES in general. And so this brings me to kind of the conclusion of this point here that MTProto, the um, Telegram's encryption scheme, is, is a homebrew, homebrew encryption scheme. So it's basically envisions made up by Telegram. And there are no external security audits on it. Now, they have uh, issued this bug bounty program that if you break a message, um, there is um, like a reward of $3,000 or something. And they do, even though they say they don't like them very much, but they do use established protocols. So they do use the Fihalman for key exchange and they do use AES. They just use it in a very weird and not um, established kind of way. And as I've said, I mean, they have this uh, bug bounty program and the encryption scheme has not been broken yet. Uh, but as I said, I mean, it's not open source, so there could be countless vulnerabilities just waiting to be exploited. Just a, a comparison, you know, Signal, for example, is very open and just says exactly what they're doing. And they use established, established uh, principles and established protocols for their encryption schemes. That brings me to the second point on um, why I don't like Telegram very, very much. Um, if you uh, watched my video on well, protection goals of secure messaging. There are a couple of protection goals and Telegram mainly fulfills most of them. But there is one they don't fulfill on a standard way and it's end-to-end -end encryption. End-to-end -end encryption means that if two communication partners, in this case Alice and Bob, want to, well, converse with each other in a secure way, end-to-end um, -end encryption means that only they themselves can see what they write to each other, right? It's encrypted in such a way that the server which conveys the message, like the Telegram server in this case, or maybe the, the Signal server or the WhatsApp server, does not know um, what's in the message. Like sometimes this uh, also conveys metadata, which it does not um, usually encrypt in, for example, in WhatsApp case. But for Signal, you can actually do it in such a way that uh, Signal doesn't even know who writes whom. 
and for Telegram, but uh, they also have end-to-end -end encryption, but it's not standard. So it is optional. You can uh, put it on, you can turn it on in your chats and you can say, well, let's start a secret chat, but it's not uh, default. And they have their reasons for that and the, the reasons are backups and other stuff. But um, it's, it's also like nowadays you would expect that if you send someone a message that it is end-to-end -end encrypted. But for Telegram, uh, as per default, it is not. And also there is no E2 encryption for group chats. So again, I've made a video on how Signal does this. Um, and I encourage you to watch this. It's possible to do E2 encryption for group chats. Telegram just does not want to do it. Because again, they have their reasons and it's a market, basically a marketing st uh, strategic decision to not do it because they have other advantages maybe over, over Signal, especially regarding backups. But yeah, as I've said, if you expect E2E encryption, um, you will not find it, at least not per default, in Telegram. And the third point I want to make is that um, it is kind of misleading marketing, I would say. Um, but uh, let me show you what I mean. They have this in the FAQ, and I'll, I'll read it to you quickly. They say that Telegram can help when it comes to data transfer and secure communication. This means that all data uh, that you send and receive via Telegram cannot be deciphered when intercepted by your ISP, so your internet service provider, uh, owners of Wi-Fi routers, uh, if you like on a train or somewhere, and uh, or th other third parties. Now, they never claim that they themselves cannot read it, uh, which is what they can, right? Because they, they it's not end-to-end -end encrypted, it's only client-server encrypted, so the server can read it. And But I mean, they, they kind of say that they help with secure communication. How secure is it really if per default Telegram can read your message? So they are open about it. I've put it as a positive here, but I'm not 100% sure if you agree. But that's the that's what they say on their, on their website. Now, I want to uh, briefly not, not only bash on Telegram, there is something I like about Telegram, uh, which I think Telegram does well and better than WhatsApp, for example. And that's that secure chats only work on device. Um, it's a bit of a problem um, on how to get these end-to-end -end encryptions working on multiple devices. Uh, WhatsApp can do it. Uh, like when you have an encrypted chat, you can look at it on your phone and on your laptop, for example. But uh, Telegram does not do this. And this is actually better for security to not do this. So if you have Telegram on your phone and you have a secure chat there and you want to access the same conversation uh, on your laptop, uh, you will not be able to do so, right? These chats are only on this device. And also if your device is lost, then all the encrypted messages are also lost. On your side, at least, not on the other parties. So. This is actually more secure because the more like the more distributed your messages are, the less secure they obviously are. So if they're only on device, you only have to keep your device secure. Now that concludes this video on why I do not recommend Telegram and why you shouldn't use it. Um, there are far better alternatives, for example, Signal and um, possibly Threema, but we'll, uh, we'll see about that uh, maybe in one of my next videos when I will discuss the secure uh, properties of Threema. But for now, thanks for watching. Consider subscribing, liking the video, leave a comment uh, if you liked what you saw, and I'll see you in the next video.